Hello, and welcome to the 2020-21 traveling basketball season. I appreciate you taking the time for this brief presentation. Uh, obviously, we were doing this in lieu of a parent meeting, and I just wanted to be able to go over a few things uh, that we normally go over during the parent meeting, uh, which is typically held at the beginning of October. I know that many of you have already begun practices, and uh, our first tournament is next weekend at Lakeville North. Uh, so I am looking forward to this season, even though it's going to be a little bit strange and we're going to have some, some, tougher, uh, some tougher tasks at hand, but um, I appreciate everybody bearing with us. And uh, we had more players this year register than we have over the last four years. So I think bringing this sense of normalcy uh, to our kids' lives is a, is a really good thing. Uh, so welcome, and I'm just going to flip through a few slides here. It's going to take about 10 minutes, and uh, just bear with me. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, talk about our board members really briefly. Um, we have three positions that are going to be up uh, following this season, and that's our travel director, the vice president, and the apparel director. Uh, Alan Williams, Carrie Schultz, and Katie Danielson have done a great job. Both Carrie and Katie are on their second term, so this is their fourth year. Um, and then, of course, John Barta, who has been in, absolutely instrumental uh, over the years, uh, taking care of us, really. Um, he has been here since the inception of the board uh, and the inception of, the, of our association 15 years ago. And uh, can't thank him enough for everything that he does. Um, Andrew Hilliard stepped up big time again for us this year and became our in-house director. Uh, he will be serving for two terms. And uh, my term, this is the beginning of my second term. Uh, so this is year three, <clears throat> I'll have a, a fourth year. Um, but really what I wanted to show you this, this page for is you see all the volunteers here that are involved. Um, none of us are paid. Uh, we do this in our spare time and we do the best that we can to provide a, both a traveling and an in-house program uh, for the girls. Um, it is important that we have fresh blood uh, every couple of years on the board and in our uh, management team. So I would like all of you to consider uh, the possibility of running for a board position or being a part of our management team uh, so that we can bring fresh ideas in and the next generations can help run the program. Uh, so there's three uh, jobs that are gonna be turning over next year. Uh, those are the ones that are in purple there. Uh, if you would like to apply for one of those jobs, please shoot myself an email. Um, if you are looking further down the road in a couple of years, uh, you're eyeing one of the other positions, please contact me now. Uh, we'd love to give you more information on it so you know what you might be getting yourself into. Um, it is a lot of fun. It's great to be able to serve uh, the Lakeville South community and uh, to work with the girls. And if you love basketball, it's a great thing to be a part of. Um, Okay, program goals for Lakeville South. Uh, we, I went over these last year as well, but first of all, we wanna be able to provide an opportunity for K through eight girls uh, to play basketball in a safe, fun, positive and constructive environment. Uh, it all kind of speaks for itself there. Um, I think that we've done a really good job of, of doing that over the years. And I wanna to continue to do that and include more and more girls, both in in-house and in traveling. Um, we also wanna be able to provide skilled players the opportunity to play against a higher level of competition. And that's why we have A and B teams in traveling basketball. Uh, most associations, if not all of them in the metro area, have it set up that way so that we have a higher level of competition for some of these girls that demand it. Um, we also wanna be able to develop players uh, that can compete at the high school level. Uh, we are in the South Suburban Conference, it's very competitive. And so we'd like to think that we're training our girls and preparing them for that next level. And of course, the life skills, which are really more important than anything else. Uh, you're talking about teamwork, confidence, problem solving, and work ethic. We know that if we teach these girls these types of life skills, it'll carry forward in high school, in college, and in their careers. Um, and so I think that uh, these are probably the most important objectives that we have, especially from our coaches. Okay, COVID procedures. I know you guys have all already heard a lot about this. You probably received a bunch of emails. Um, unfortunately, we are, we're walking a tightrope here. Uh, John Barta has worked tirelessly to get us gym time uh, with community ed, working with schedules, working with other associations that want gym time. 
And uh, it has not been easy. I can tell you that uh, firsthand. Uh, he is on a couple of Zoom calls every week trying to get things figured out. And it's constantly changing, as you can imagine, how this has been going with COVID. So a few things I just wanted to remind the parents and the players. If you're not feeling well, stay home. Uh, I had a daughter that did get COVID and she had a runny nose for a weekend. And sure enough, she had COVID. So if they're starting to show any symptoms, uh, please keep them home until those are either resolve or you've been tested. Um, no parents are allowed in the building for practices. Coaches' responsibility are to wait at the door or to have a parent volunteer wait at the door, usher the team in, and then they will take them out once practice is over. Uh, I know it's gonna be tough when it gets colder, uh, just keep the cars warm and um, we'll try to take care of the rest. Uh, and of course, entering and exiting the building, the players must be wearing a mask. Okay, player expectations for the season. Um, obviously, we would like all players, again, it's gonna be tough because you guys are gonna be rushed into these tournaments. There's not gonna be a lot of warm up. Uh, so I think it's really important that before you leave the house, when you're in the car and you're ready to go, be prepared mentally and physically for each game in practice. Um, again, the warmups are going to be short. So mentally, that mental preparation is probably going to be more important this year than ever before. Uh, be ready to go. Um, commit to your team. Uh, there's a lot of other commitments during the season, including other sports, but it is basketball season. And we ask that you try to stay as committed to your travel team as much, much as you can. Uh, be respectful to your coach. The, the coaches put in a ton of time and energy into this season, and they have more responsibilities this year. Um, be respectful to your parents. They're the ones hauling you around, getting you ready, feeding you. Um, make sure that uh, you're treating them with the respect that they deserve. Uh, treat your teammates with, with, with respect. They're out there working just as hard as you are. Um, the referees, of course, no reason to backtalk the referees. Just mind your manners. Um, respect the competition. And most importantly, and I mentioned this last year, respect yourself. Take care of yourself. Work hard. Do yourself a favor and eat right and get sleep. Um, Okay. Now the coach expectations. We have had, uh, and I'll be mentioning this in a later slide, we are having individual coach meetings this weekend. Uh, I had a few yesterday. We have more today. Um, we are going to be really enforcing these types of expectations on them, especially this year, to be very patient and to be positive. Uh, be a teacher and be a leader. Uh, skills. Skills are so important. Um, scrimmaging all practice long is not going to help them. They need to develop their skills, especially at a young age. And so that is something that we're going to be constantly reinforcing. Uh, and then of course, developing the team. We don't need to develop one or two players. We need to develop the entire team and learn, learn how to play basketball. Okay. Parent expectations. Uh, encourage your athlete throughout the season. It's going to be a roller coaster, believe me. It's going to be up and down. It's going to be difficult at times. Uh, but do your best to hang in there with them. Be the level head. When they're down, pick them back up. When they're too high, maybe humble them a little bit. Just keep them level. Uh, I think that that's what's really important here. Um, they're, they're, the emotions are going to be strained. With, with all the COVID procedures, there's going to be canceled tournaments. There's going to be canceled games. There's going to be canceled practices. It's important you're there for them. Um, great athletes, as I mentioned before, have great eating and sleeping habits. Make sure that they're eating well, particularly before games and tournaments, and that they're getting enough sleep. Um, please be respectful to the coaches. Again, they put in an enormous amount of time. Um, if you have an issue, please ask that your player tries to resolve it first. And if they can't, then, then ask for a meeting with the coach. Sit down, talk it through. Uh, I am a huge fan of the 24-hour rule. If you're hot, if you're upset after a game or a tournament and you really want to talk to the coach uh, and you have a grievance, take the 24 hours, take a deep breath, and then feel free to reach out to them. Uh, the referees, they're doing the best that they can. Uh, I witnessed a lot in the last, uh, within the last summer in the AAU season. Uh, these guys are working their butts off. They're unprotected for the most part and not wearing masks. And so they are exposing themselves. Make sure that we're being respectful to them. 
Uh, be respectful to the other girls on your daughter's team, and of course, the competition. Finally, we're going to be asking you to get involved once again with the Cougar Classic uh, as a volunteer commitment. Um, so please, the date's coming up here shortly, but please reserve that weekend. We don't know what it's going to look like at this point. We don't know how many volunteers we're going to need, but expect to help. So please take that weekend off and be ready to go. Here we go. Here are the dates. Uh, coaches meetings have been going on this weekend. Again, we're just reiterating what we would like them to focus on, seeing if there's anything we can do to help them and talking over the COVID procedures. We have the Rochester tournament a couple of weekends. So we're excited about that. Again, it's going to be weird. It's going to be different, uh, but we're glad to be going down this fall. That seemed to be the, uh, uh, the prevailing opinion that a fall tournament was better than a spring one in Rochester. Uh, and then finally, we have our Cougar Classic on January 15th through the 17th. Um, again, make yourself available for that. Okay, this is the tournament schedule and it can be found on our LSGBA website. I'm guessing you all have a copy and hopefully have it pinned up on your refrigerator. Uh, practice schedule and expectations. I'm gonna fly through these because I think for the most part, everybody gets it. We're looking for two practices a week. Uh, we are, uh, our priority is skill development over scrimmaging. And um, as far as attendance goes, you know, again, that's going to be all over the board, I'm sure, as we're dealing with COVID. Uh, but do the best you can to be at practices. Um, and of course, if you can't be there, please notify the coach. They make practice plans based on who's going to be at practice, detailed practice plans. So it's important that they know who's going to be there. Just one player missing from a practice plan can really throw it out of whack. So please be communicative to your team manager and coach. Okay, playing time, third and fourth graders. Uh, we are looking for 50-50 split on playing time. Um, it is strongly, strongly encouraged. Uh, for fifth through eighth grade, we wanna see at least 40% of the game minutes over the course of the season uh, for each of the players. Now we know that uh, when the competition gets hot and we're looking to try to win games that we might be looking to put in some of our more uh, skilled players or possibly the ones that happen to be playing the best during that game or during that tournament. Uh, we leave that decision up to the coaches as long as it's fair and we, keep, we stay above the 60-40 playing time rule. Um, I would prefer it to be a 60-40 over the course of a tournament, uh, but we are allowing them a little bit of latitude over the course of the season. Uh, okay, items affecting playing time, author, unauthorized absences from practices and games, illness, injury, uh, attitude, effort, willingness, and listen to coach. I think a lot of those are self-explanatory. All right, a few other things. Please take care of your uniforms. Uh, Katie Danielson sent out some instructions on how to take care of them. Uh, it's important you follow them. They do get ruined fairly easily and they're not easy to replace. They are expensive uniforms. Uh, but it beats the alternative. We had some uniforms for several years that were always way oversized, very uncomfortable uniforms. And so we feel like we've got a good, happy medium here with these, but you do have to take care of them. Um, apparel orders are gonna be shipped to you prior to Christmas if you placed an order a few weeks ago. Uh, we mentioned the volunteer commitment uh, for the Cougar Classic, but additionally, uh, if you would like to have your team uh, participate in any kind of a volunteer activity as a team, which we highly, highly encourage, then please reach out to Angela Schmicky. She's got some wonderful ideas and we're gonna be passing a lot of those ideas on to the coaches. Uh, finally, the high school season. Uh, there has been no definitive timetable uh, other than the fact that they can start practices in December. We don't know what the schedule is going to look like yet. Uh, we're hopeful. And if secondary education goes to full-time learning uh, or full-time distance learning, which it looks like it's going to, we don't know how that's going to affect the season. And we don't know whether or not spectators can be there. So uh, if you can't be, please cheer for them from afar. Um, obviously, we are tied uh, closely with the high school uh, program and they with us. So it's important that we support each other the best that we can. Okay, I'm almost done. Last slide, off-season recommendations. Our fall training this past fall was an enormous success yet again. So thank you for participating in that. It helps out the kids amazingly well with, their, with getting ready for the season. We will continue to do that next year. That is fully paid by LSGBA. We take care of that, those training sessions. 
And we feel like it's a little bit better use of time than just a free for all open gym. So I hope that you found those to be helpful. Uh, the 10,000 Shot Club, I have some names I wanna read off. We had five girls reach the 10,000 shots. Uh, I know that the app was a little bit of a pain in the butt to use and we'll look for perhaps either an alternative app or another way of doing this next summer. Uh, but we did have widespread uh, participation and I wanna congratulate Ava Drury uh, and Lauren Schellhammer and Taylor Tetner from the fifth grade, uh, Elizabeth Payne from sixth and Ashlyn Williams from seventh grade, all were over 10,000 shots. And I also wanna do a little shout out to Ellie Schwein in fourth grade who was over 7,000 shots. So just awesome work, you guys. Really, really, that is terrific. Hopefully we'll get more next year. We are gonna get t-shirts out to all of you. Um, AU and MYAS basketball. So every spring, there is uh, an AAU season and an MYAS season as well. So if you are looking to participate, there is information on our website. Uh, a lot of the tryouts for AAU clubs have already taken place, but there's often teams that are looking to, uh, oftentimes there are teams that are looking to fill some spots. Um, one of the things that came up in our, uh, in our parents survey was uh, whether or not we support multi-sport athletes. And I wanna tell you that we absolutely do. Uh, of course, we support additional basketball in the spring and playing on AAU and MYAS club basketball because that extends their skills and ex extends their experience with basketball. But is there time to run track in the spring? Absolutely. Is there time to play soccer in the fall? Is there time to play uh, to run cross country in the fall? Absolutely. Lacrosse in the spring? You bet. And we encourage that. It helps prevent injury. And it's a lot more fun to be able to be involved with more than one activity. Weight training and fitness training. There are programs that the high school program puts on that the weight training staff puts on in the summer. I highly advise that you take advantage of that uh, because I think even at, uh, at the age of in sixth and seventh grade, that is a great time to get started with that. All right, well, obviously we couldn't do any of this without the parents. Uh, you guys have been phenomenal over the last several seasons. Uh, your volunteering, your commitment to your kids, uh, and your commitment to the program uh, has been phenomenal, uh, and it's shown in our growth. So I can't thank you enough, and if there's anything that myself or any other board member can do to help, or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can find our emails on lsgba.com, and uh, have a great season.